Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. Ghosts. They're in season right now, being Halloween and everything. And I'm not talking about ghosts from the classic fictional ghost stories. I'm talking about the ghosts that people think they see sometimes. The ghosts that uh, parapsychologists explore and try to hunt down. Uh, the ghosts that are uh, the things that we're alternately scared of and fascinated by if we come across them. Now, the first thing is to mention the bunch of different types of ghosts that there are. And the first type is the ones that just replay the same thing again and again and again and again. These are the uh, very classic stories of uh, the old king that walks around the castle every night and can be seen standing on the parapets at the strike of midnight. Uh, the stories of the wailing woman in the woods uh, who on the anniversary of her son's death can always be found uh, walking through the woods crying. Uh, the ghost ships that, that can be seen off the coast any time a storm blows up. Uh, these kinds of ghosts are ones that don't interact with anything around them. Uh, there's no sign of any intelligence in them. There's no sign of any uh, ability to change what they do. And these ghosts, these recorded static ghosts, uh, may, may be uh, psychic recordings. Energy, emotional energy caught by a certain area uh, and triggered every now and then uh, by either another buildup of energy or by the regular ebb and flow of uh, things within the area. Now, these are energies, of course, uh, in theory, uh, that only some people are tuned into uh, and others are not tuned into it. Some outright negate it. Uh, but generally, we're talking about a phenomenon that some people are more sensitive to than others. And that's true with, with all of the ghost and psychic stuff, uh, is we're dealing with very unreliable detectors, because generally, it's just us. Um, there are other things that, that can be used. Uh, we'll talk about the actual ghost hunting equipment in, in another uh, video. Uh, but these recorded ghosts, these playback ghosts, these are the sorts of things uh, that, that get talked about and end up becoming local legends because they do happen on a semi-regular basis. Uh, and they're, they're not interactive. They're not the kinds of ghosts that, that are going to uh, jump out and scare you. They're not the case, kind of ghosts that are going to chase you anywhere. Uh, they're the kind of ghosts that you see walking down the hallway and then you turn the corner and they're gone. Uh, they're the battlefield ghosts, the ones that uh, you can get at Gettysburg sometimes uh, with, with uh, EVPs and audio recordings. Uh, not necessarily interactive ones, but just sounds of battles long ago. Uh, and there's a bunch of different theories, again, about how that works. It, it could be the uh, psychic recording. It could be um, the person's imagination uh, playing tricks on them, especially if they know about the history of where they are. Uh, or it could be, uh, depending on how you believe time works, it could be a slight overlap in time uh, and a thin spot where some of the past leaks through, uh, but it's always the same point in the past. So what you're seeing is actually just like watching a video of an historical event that actually happened. Um, so that's that one type of ghost. The second type of ghost uh, is your, your poltergeist. Your ones that 
throw stuff around, that uh, close windows and doors, that rearrange the furniture, uh, that, that turn lights on and off. And those aren't necessarily, uh, again, sentient ghosts. Those are theorized in many cases to be random bunches of uh, psychic energy, telekinetic energy, uh, that react to uh, usually a kid in the house, someone, uh, a kid who's becoming a teenager, who's going through puberty, who has all of that uh, internal stuff going on that, that's kicking up a whole lot of extra psychic energy to power these random bursts of stuff. Uh, so that's one of the interesting things, and it's also one of the reasons I get annoyed by the old horror film Poltergeist, because they're not really dealing with a poltergeist in that movie. But that's another story altogether. Uh, poltergeists and other uh, activities like that, your, your noisy spirits, your, your ones that, again, don't necessarily communicate in any way, shape, or form, uh, are very often just random bits of energy floating around, random bits of uh, stuff that, that gets triggered. Uh, and that makes them kind of tough to nail down, kind of tough to detect, kind of tough to uh, really experiment with because they're not sentient, they're not interactive uh, in a controlled way. Now the third type of ghost, this is the important type. This is the type uh, that we usually think of when we think of uh, ghosts in the modern sense. Uh, these are the ones that are the remaining energies, the remaining personalities, the remaining spirits of actual people. Uh, they're the ones that uh, you ask them to knock three times on the wall and they will knock three times on the wall. Uh, you ask them to turn a flashlight on and off and that flashlight will turn on and off. They're the ones that when you see them and you move toward them, they may reach out to you. They may, uh, you may find them sitting at the end of your bed, uh, looking at you and tucking you in at night if it's a ghost of a loved one. Uh, they are the ones that uh, do interact, the ones that are pretty much the epitome of what all ghost hunters really want to find. Uh, the ghosts that you can actually uh, communicate with, that you can actually get information from in order to do more research and figure out who they really may be. Uh, and, and those aren't the most common ghosts around. You'd think maybe they would be, because Heck, there's an awful lot of dead people around. Uh, why aren't more of them just hanging around? And that starts to get into the question of, well, what are they actually? And you've heard me mention energy a whole lot, and that's one of the prevalent theories, is that all that ghosts are is a conglomeration of energy. Uh, an energy form that exists concurrently with our physical form uh, makes up, in part, all of the electrical impulses that, that keep us running, uh, but also is another type of energy that we can't yet easily and regularly detect. Uh, much like magnetism and electricity are related, uh, the, the spiritual energy is related in a similar way, uh, but we can only detect it indirectly, uh, mechanically, at least. So we can detect ghosts in many cases by things like temperature drops or by disturbances in the local electromagnetic field. Uh, mostly, though, it's, it's our own senses that key in to these things uh, that let us see these apparitions that sometimes we can get on camera, sometimes we can only see, sometimes we can get them on recordings, and sometimes only we can hear them. But these are also things that we are generally tuned into uh, as they're effectively part of us. And that's one theory. 
And that's the one that I believe personally uh, that when you have an interactive uh, ghost like that, the the ghost of an actual person, that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with that personified remnant of them, that non-physical part of them that has yet to disperse or move on or get recycled, as the case may be, uh, back into the universal energy that... Uh, we all come from that we're all surrounded by. And there's a lot of things that can cause that, again, in theory. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, if they're a very strong personality with very strong desires to complete something or to uh, accomplish something. Uh, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stories, personal stories out there about people who see loved ones after they die. Uh, usually just coming by for that one last goodbye or a recently deceased grandparent checking in on their uh, young grandchild because kids are more tuned into this than a lot of uh, older people are. And a lot of that has to do with how as we grow up, we're taught to filter out and ignore a lot of things that kids don't. It's also, in part, the greater vividness of imagination and that kind of blurry line between fantasy and reality that, that as we grow up, we fall out of. Uh, but that's just a couple of things uh, ghost-wise, and that's uh, your, your three main types of ghosts. Your uh, completely recorded replay uh, doesn't interact can't get anything out of it. It just does the same thing again and again and again. Your poltergeist, which is your uh, noisy spirit, your thing that rattles the shelves, uh, but you can't really communicate with it because it doesn't have any intelligence of its own. And your actual uh, ghosts of real people uh, who you can interact with, who are there maybe for some sort of reason, uh, and that uh, if you're a ghost hunter, those are the kind you want to find. There are a number of other non-physical entities that you can come across. There, there are things like that people would call demons, maybe aliens, maybe just thought forms uh, that have been created. But those are all completely different from your core types of ghosts. So if you have an idea of what ghosts might be, uh, or if you've interacted with any of those types of ghosts, seen them firsthand, uh, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear your stories, uh, especially if you go out looking for this stuff or you've just had it happen. Uh, I want to hear that. Uh, so if you like this video, uh, give me a like down at the bottom there, just a little thumbs up. Uh, feel free to subscribe so you can get notified of all the new ones of these that come out, still coming out daily. So uh, get notified of that. And uh, if there's anyone else out there that you know that might be interested in stuff like this, feel free to share this video with them, get it out there so we can hear their stories too. Because I want to hear lots and lots of stories from people uh, about this stuff. That's it for tonight. Uh, I'm Kier, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow.